First question is from Jay Rosen 10. Explain isometric exercises. How would you use them in a workout? All right. So uh, probably one of the most valuable yet underutilized uh, techniques in training, I would say, yes. um, is training isometrics. So uh, you could loosely categorize, um, I guess, repetitions or how muscles contract three different ways, right? So there's the positive portion of a rep, the concentric, that would be like me curling a bar. That's a muscle contraction. Then there's an eccentric or the lowering of the bar muscle contraction. So that would be me bringing the bar down with a curl. And then isometric is essentially just holding steady, right? Mm -hmm. So a muscle's holding a weight steady or right. supporting something stationary. Maximal contraction, but you're not uh, moving at all. Right. Now, this produces, first off, the strength gains you get tend to be relatively specific, meaning if I only train concentric or I only train eccentric or only train isometric, I get a lot of strength gains in that one thing that I train, but there's so much carryover. Mm -hmm. This is where it gets fun. Isometric training does not damage the body Definitely not as much as eccentric, which is probably the most damaging, and not as much as concentric, which is still more damaging. So isometric is a great way to add volume without causing uh, lots of damage. The other thing that it does is it turns on the central nervous system really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, one of the ways that I, I have always used uh, isometric training as a trainer was when I had a client who had trouble feeling a muscle yes. or firing a muscle. So. If I had a client who's like, man, when I do squats, uh, it's all quads. I get no activation in my butt. That's what I'm trying to build. Then we would do like an isometric squeeze uh, before the squat, and that would give them the ability to start to feel it um, in the glutes, almost like turning on the glutes. In that case, you would just I would put them in a squeeze position. I'd have provide a little bit of resistance, and I'd have them hold the squeeze for hard for 10 seconds or something like that. So that's one way uh, to do it. I used, I used to use it too where I you. Uh, I would take a client and I'd, I'd get them to, whether it be a bench press, a curl, anything, and I'd get them to hold it in that position. And then I would actually move their body. Like, because a lot of times when someone's doing an exercise, even as simple as a bicep curl, I mean, how many times have you seen somebody, you try to teach a bicep curl, you show them and then they try and do it and then their, their shoulders roll forward, they rock, they right. do all these things. No matter how many times you say the cues. Mm -hmm. So sometimes what I would do is I'd take the, you know, like say, let's say the curl and they go up ha the halfway point and then I would come over, then I'd actually hold that and then I'd go walk behind them, pull their shoulders back, tuck their chin in mm -hmm. and be like, this is the position I want right. you in while you're in this, while you're feeling this contraction. Same thing for like a bench press. I would get them down in that deep position, get them to pull their shoulder blades back, hold it. So I love it for teaching technique and form Yeah, I too. love that same thing, uh, you know, addressing weak points in whatever part of the, the movement. Like if you're trying to then add you know, a, a performance enhancement. So where the performance leaks, where you lose a bit of, uh, you know, this tension in the muscle that's supportive. So when when the body recognizes that you're not fully stabilized in a certain range of motion or a position, it's not going to allow for you to get as much force mm -hmm. uh, to create. So uh, it really is a performance enhancing type of a method too, if you apply it uh, directly like that. And also there's, there's a 15 sort of degree uh, uh, carryover in terms of like how how the strength sort of uh, translates like up or down from that angle too. So it gets affected, uh, you know, from that angle, gets affected 15 degree radius on both sides. Yeah, so for an example, for what you're talking about, Justin, uh, if you were to apply this, let's say the bottom position of a squat is where you're the weakest, which is quite common. Then what you might do is an isometric squat in the bottom position. There's a couple ways you could do this. The more advanced way to do this would be to set the safety bars so that the bar that you're squatting pushes up against the safeties. And then what you do is you get in position, and you got to make sure you have really, really good uh, stabilization. Really, really, because you, if you have bad uh, position here, then you're going to do an isometric with bad technique. Mm -hmm. So good form, good technique. Squat up with the bar and push into the safeties really hard but stay stable. And what that'll do is make you stronger in, or, or it'll work on increasing strength in that bottom position. But then to what Justin said, you get that 15 degree carry over. So let's say it was 90 degrees that you were doing the squat. Mm -hmm. Well, it's going to be at you know 80, uh, 75 degrees or plus 15 degrees uh, from from 90. So 105, right? Yeah, I just want to add one more because like I I'm definitely have been passionate, have been studying a lot about uh, isometric training. Uh, there's also an, an analgesic effects. So there's there's a pain relieving effect to uh, also like applying isometric tension, uh, you know, throughout the body to stabilize around the joints. So if somebody has knee pain or uh, you know 
know, has lost a bit of uh, stability. Uh, you know, just just taking that time to go through an exercise where we're focusing on squeezing and connecting and stabilizing around the joint is it's it's a pain relieving uh, technique as well. Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. What is it that's causing it to do that? Is it just firing all the surrounding muscles around that joint because it's, you're doing it like it has like a like it radiates out? Is it's, that like the idea? Like it's if I, actually it's actually similar to myofascial release when you push hard on a muscle and you get this mm-hmm. kind of localized analgesic effect. Uh-huh. Um, you get that with uh, with isometrics. There's a, there's a localized and then there's also the kind of the sy- systemic effect. You know what's interesting about this is that it this was such a huge training tool back in the day. When you look at like strong men, strength athletes from you know I'd say before the 1940s, this was a mainstay in their routine. This is one, of, and one of the reasons is because a lot of these strong men, uh, they you know bodybuilding shows weren't a thing really back then. That didn't become a thing till a little bit later. So what these these people would do is they would do these performances where they would balance tremendously heavy weights above their head often, or in maybe a bent press position, or they would do a hip bridge and they'd have like a table and, and they'd you know drive a motorcycle on it and stuff like that. So they would train a lot of uh, isometrics to have that kind of strength uh, and stability. You could still see this in acrobats. If you ever watch uh, like circus performers where there's two, you ever see those those acts where there's like two guys mm-hmm. and one guy's holding the other guy up with right. one hand? That's tremendous isometric strength. Yeah. Uh, and this is a wonderful Crazy thing body control. to develop. It teaches your central nervous system to really turn on. I mean, to give you an example of, of what I'm talking about, if you were to squeeze like a something that measured your grip strength, but you were squeezed as hard as you could with your right hand, but kept the rest of your body relaxed, you would only get so strong. If you did it again, but tensed up your entire body, you would actually produce more force. This mm-hmm. is a this is a central nervous system, um, you know, you know factor. This is, this is the CNS being able to fire better. Isometrics at the beginning of a workout done properly can actually increase your stability and performance during the workout. So for strength athletes. Applying them properly, don't fatigue yourself, but applying them properly at the beginning of the workout will make you stronger and more stable during the workout. For the bodybuilder types, for people interested in hypertrophy, use them as finishers. Bodybuilders have done this for years. They didn't call it isometrics; they said posing. Yeah, they pose, yeah, yeah. They say, "Oh, at the end of my chest routine, I like to pose my chest and squeeze it." Yeah. For Bruce Lee used to, uh, <sighs> you know, promote this quite a bit too. Oh, he was he was well known for. It. In fact, there's uh, he do it in between sets even. Yeah, and there was uh, there were stories of him uh, being able to balance a hundred pound dumbbell at arm's length. You know, he couldn't bench press a lot, but he had this incredible isometric strength because he said it, it helped him punch. Yeah, with more more uh, stability or whatever. So, beginning of the workout for performance and strength, end of the workout uh, for hypertrophy or you know, like his bodybuilders say, as a finisher. 